Okay, thank you very much. Over to you, Doc. All right. Has Doc been kicked out, it seems? I guess she's, she's joined again. Sorry about that. Okay, so yeah. So I think a few folks are just joining. So I want to say that this program is absolutely crucial. It's a pilot. So we're just launching this out. And the reason is to gather data and evidence. Okay. So that's very, very important. And ultimately, at the end of the pilot, then we can now move into the national rollout. In which case, every coordinator on this pilot automatically becomes the lead coordinator for the region. That's that is not negotiable because it's very clear to me. There's so much work that for this to work nationally for a national rollout, we need a lot of people who understand what the program is about and can help. And there, are, we are too few. So this pilot was also designed not only to show evidence of impact to show evidence of the power and transformational effect of the program. But another reason is to gather resources or resource persons who would support the national rollout. And those would be paid roles. That's the essence of the pilot. So on that note, I want to invite uh, Dr. Viola take us through this. Good evening, Good evening our amazing coordinators. It's an absolute privilege to work with you on this project. It's a massive project, like Dr. Wina said. So I'll briefly take you through the structure and then we'll look at the curriculum, exactly what you'll be teaching or learning. The way the program, the project is structured, there are two programs running concurrently. We have the program for staff called Sustainability. Um, stimulating sustainable entrepreneurship, um, entrepreneurial thinking in sciences and the program for students, the International Career Coaching Program. Again, because we are trying to look at data that gives so evidence of impact, how we structure this particular project is very important. In terms of numbers, already you're involved in um, populating WhatsApp group for students. We are trying to get um, possible participants. For, this, for staff participants, we are almost done. For the students, we are still expecting some groups, but that's well and good. The way the program is designed, we have three phases for the program. The first phase is the pre-intervention phase, where we have two months to do all of this um, participants, sorting, screening, recognizing who is who, setting up platforms, onboarding people, and all of that, leading up to the pre-intervention evaluation, where we need to measure baseline competencies. If we want to prove that something is effective, we must have somewhere we are starting from. So all of that happens in the pre-intervention that is already ongoing. After that, we have a two-month period for the intervention proper. That is where we will interact with the participants. Both the SETS program and ICCP will run concurrently at the same time, each on its own different set of platforms, with its own set of personnel, with its own curriculum. At the end of the intervention, we'll have four months post-intervention period. At this, in this phase, we would have three months for post-intervention evaluation. We have three sets of post-intervention evaluation that we'll be doing. We would have an immediate post-intervention evaluation, an intermediate post-intervention evaluation, and a delayed post-intervention evaluation. The reason is, it's not enough for us to say, we've done an intervention, it was successful, people were impacted, we have a post-intervention data that proves it. Many other things, many other variables are important in explaining what went right, what perhaps did not go right, why some people may have performed exceedingly well, why some people may not have performed so well, 
So all of those explanations will be done at the post-evaluation stage across those three months. The delayed post-intervention evaluation allows us to measure after a period of time, whether the impact we made after at the end of the intervention is sustainable, whether the impact has been carried forward, whether the impact is continuing. Remember that we have a three month period when we will no longer be interacting with participants. The participants will be on their own. No mentoring, is, no mentoring is going on. No coaching is going on. The question is, if the program had been done right, we should be able to, add, even with three months down the line, still see good progress happening. So that's why we have that structured. And the last month is where we do the final report and submission. So basically that's how the program is faced. So right now we are getting participants onboarded on the WhatsApp, on the WhatsApp group for the pre-screening exercise. There are two categories, because there are two programs, of course, we have the set staff program and we have the student program. So we have two categories of persons involved in the projects. How are we set, um, selecting our participants at the end of the day? On the project, we have 14 universities. Across the six ge geopolitical zones in Nigeria and the FCT, making seven regions. So for each region, we have a main university and we have a proximity university. The main universities supply us with a greater number of, of participants. The proximity universities are bringing a lesser number. The reason for the proximity is for us to be able to, one, Compare within the region, what, what might be happening across universities. Two, also allows us to extend the program so that we have more people within that region that can help in the larger rollout. So that's the reason for that. In terms of actual numbers for the program, at this phase, for the, this particular pilot, 40 staff from the main universities and 10 from the proximity universities will participate in the pilot. For the students, 300 from the main universities and 60 from the proximity universities. Now, measuring impact, it's not just for this, for in this instance, the, the participants we are looking at, it's not, it's not um, just anybody on the program. Part of the reasons why we need to be very careful with the screening is because of the selection criteria. If you would um, recall, or you're probably aware, that we specify certain things in um, your participants' list. We asked for a list that has 90% representation of STEM participants and 10% non-STEM, 70% for early, early career and 30% for late career, and 60% female, 40% male. These specifications are part of the design. For this, that's for staff. For the students um, category, we have 90% STEM, 10% non-STEM, 60% um, female, and 40% male. Once we have our selection in place, the people that have made it for this particular program will be migrated from the current WhatsApp formations. So that is important. Not everybody currently will make it to that list because we need to maintain fidelity with the criteria. So once we have that, we will migrate the selected participants to the actual platforms we will be using for the program. The remaining people will particip may participate in the second phase. Now, the participants that will, partic that will be part of this particular phase, the pilot phase, are also in two categories. Because we want to be able to measure impact effectively, it is not enough to say we gave a package or we did an intervention, there was pre-test, there was post-test, and we saw improvements. Therefore, um, it was our program was fantastic. That is not enough. To be able to demonstrate impact empirically in a way that um, there is nobody criticizing the results, we must have a control group. So that is the reason for this particular project, we will be having an intervention group and then a control group. For the staff participants, the 40 staff coming from each main university, 30 will be assigned to the intervention, 10 will be in the control. For the 10 staff coming from proximity universities, 
seven will be assigned to the intervention, three will be in the control. For the students category, out of the 300 students from each main university, 250 will be in the intervention, 50 will be in the control. For the students from the proximity universities, out of the 60 we are getting, 50 will be in the intervention, 10 will be in the control. Altogether, per region, we should have a total of 37 staff in the intervention. We should have 300 students in the intervention. This will then determine how participants are assigned to their respective WhatsApp groups. And this is important so that people don't get confused saying some people are here and some people are there. In terms of the WhatsApp formations, we would have for the staff candidates, the people that make it for this particular pilot, two WhatsApp groups. One will be for the intervention, one will be for the control. The total number of staff for the intervention will be 259. The total number of staff for the control group will be 81. All of them are going to their separate groups. And we have people, we have um, coaches that will be in charge of those administrations on the WhatsApp groups. For the staff, can, for the student candidates, the 300 students for a particular region in the intervention, we go into one WhatsApp group. So the WhatsApp group for students will be seven for the intervention, one for control. Each WhatsApp group will be per region. So if, for instance, we take the FCT as a region, Nile University and Bayes University will be in the same WhatsApp group for the intervention. University of Lagos and Caleb University will be in the same WhatsApp group for the intervention. For the control, everybody goes into one WhatsApp group. We also have mentors to administrate on those platforms. Once we sort out the WhatsApp platforms, we can then onboard on all the other platforms. I remember, if you recall, I put up a notice that we are going to be we're going to start onboarding on LinkedIn this week, and that is already in progress. So effectively, once the um, participant formations are done, we will also onboard them on LinkedIn because LinkedIn is a vital platform for these projects. Once all of that is set, then we get into the pre-intervention to collect pre-intervention data, and then we can start the intervention proper, which will begin in April, that is next month. The intervention will last for two months, like I said. Both programs will run concurrently. So I'll just take you through the basic outline of the two programs, what we should expect will happen in both programs. As coordinators, we should know what is going on in both programs. Before you go on, Doug, I want to just, okay. before you go on, Doug, quickly. Just to make a, a, a very important point. So now you do know that for the, so you were all asked to get six, uh, 80 staff for 600 students. This is just for clarity. So what is going to happen? Is the whole project has been broken into, in terms of implementation of the actual program into phases, two phases. Phase one is the actual, if you like, experimental design. And phase two is just the program delivered. So what do I mean? So imagine a new state university. Okay, gave us 80 staff. We split down the middle. There's now 40 staff for phase one, 40 staff for phase two. So in phase one, which is April and May, 30 of those staff goes to the intervention group. They will receive the program. Then 10 of them will not receive the program. They are a control group. And at the end, so before and after, we will do some analysis to find out where they are on different indicators. This is the only way we can show evidence of impact. But look at the good thing. At the end of that April and May, phase one, the 10 uh, staff who didn't receive the program in that phase will now join the 40 other staff and all the 50 of them will now receive the program in June and July. Does that make sense? Because it's important to know that everybody that has been nominated will receive the program. But it's important for us to start first with the experimental design before we now roll it out to everybody. Maybe before, before you continue, Doc, any questions? Or if it's clear to everybody so far, can you just say yes, yes, yes on the chat? It's the only way I can know that we are communicating, please. If, if everything that you've heard so far is clear, can you just please just yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Thank you Professor Aisha. Thank you, Professor. Anybody else before I continue? Thank you, uh, Dr. Pfizer. 
much appreciated. So it's, if it's clear so far, then um, you can continue that. Thanks. Okay, so the program itself, what does it look like? Let me take the set program first. You know, the set program is an evidence-based program, but also, but also place-based. What does that mean? You can have universities in Nigeria, and then you can have universities in other parts of the world with some similarities, but also some differences. So context is important for this program. The context of Nigeria, a typical Nigerian academic has or is said to have three basic functions. We talk of research, teaching, and community service. But then we find that, that the average Nigerian academic is generally dissatisfied across these levels. Research. They just want to do research. They are not so much of the um, teaching type. They are not so much interested in engaging with students as much as they just want to do research. You also have some academics who are more into teaching. They love that encounter with students. They love the engagement with students. The only reason they do research is because they need it for promotion. Then you have people who want to engage in community service. Either they're not open to the opportunities, they can see the opportunities, or they're not positioned for the opportunities. And so across, you have people who, they use your time, energy, and money to carry out the research. They use your time and energy to write the, write the report. And then they use their own money again to publish the report. So that becomes a very cumbersome thing, trying to, you know, maintain that status in a country where we understand the economic situations. The people who are more teaching inclined will tell you, oh, large class is a problem, or they don't know what to do with this category of students. The students are not, you know, responding, or they're more interested in the social media. There are problems with every category, but every problem presents solution, presents opportunities for us to thrive. So what this program really does is not trying to convert academics to entrepreneurs, not necessarily. Being an entrepreneur is just one of the expressions, possible expressions that can come out of a program like this. What we are trying to do with the SET program is really to read to the thinking of academics such that we begin to think in ways for us to see the problems as opportunities to help us navigate this sharing of uncertainties so that we are not caught up in this rat race of constantly trying to get by. The most senior professor, we know what the person is earning. If you are living with the constant, with the current Nigerian wage system, I don't know how that's gonna work, especially with things happening today. So it is important that we begin to think and act differently if we are going to make headway, not just as Nigerians living in Nigeria, but also in the global community, because the academic community is global. If somebody is earning um, 200,000 in today's economy, you're not earning money. If somebody is, um, is uh, trying to publish research and it seems like half of your salary is going into publishing a paper, then there is a problem. But there are people that are doing it right and getting it right. And this is what this program is designed to teach. So the program we run through two months, that's eight weeks, and there are topics for each week. From each topic, there are activities that we need to do. It's very activity-based. It's very little talking around. It's get things done. So in the first week of the program, we are going to be looking, trying to understand what please bit entrepreneurial thinking is. Like I said, it's not about converting academics to entrepreneurs. Some people may start businesses as an expression of their entrepreneurial thinking and actions. Some people may not. They may go into other areas. So what are these possible areas? We've been able, we've presented, we are presenting to you over 10 options you can explore. Ways that people in other parts of the world have chosen as their ways to express their entrepreneurial self. So you can have option of setting up a business, yes, connecting with industry partners, 
um, coming up with innovative ideas for your students, um, collaborating for research, converting research into um, patents, um, going beyond publishing in a journal where nobody reads except for the academic community, to spreading your research, communicating your research in such a way that people in the, out in the global world, people in the industries, people that actually need those solutions can connect with us. We don't longer want to be in our small cocoons doing small things and feeling like the world is against us. People are getting it right and we need to get on the bandwagon with it. So, so we have many ways that we can explore entrepreneurial thinking beyond what we have been used to. So these are the things you're going to be looking at, understanding how we can begin to think and act differently as um, academics. In week two and week three, we'll be identifying opportunities. It is okay not to know everything. It is okay not to be able to do everything. Nobody knows everything and nobody is able to do everything. What is important is that we know ourselves, we know our strengths, we know how to connect with the persons that have the complementary things that we require to achieve the things we want to do. So we are adding value to somebody and somebody is adding value to us. The question then is how do we identify those opportunities that can allow us to think and act entrepreneurially? These things are everywhere. I've mentioned some of them, they seem like problems, but actually they can be converted to opportunities. For instance, you say your students um, are too involved in social media. That may seem like a vice, but a vice that can be converted to a virtue if we know what to do with that problem. We could say all oh, the challenges with um, conducting and reporting research, uh, funding and all of that. People are getting funding. There are people that are willing to give money for research. The question is, if you are able to convert that thinking that it's a problem and see the opportunity in it. So that will take us through week two and week three. In week four, in week, in week four, we'll be looking at resources and approaches. How do we move from point A to point B? So we've identified areas that we could possibly be entrepreneurial. On. We could identify areas that can help us to promote our research, whether you are, in case you are more research oriented, we identified areas that can help us to be more innovative in our teaching if we are more teaching oriented. We've identified areas that can help us to be more impactful in community service. For instance, um, there are some people that they have great quality, they have content, but they can't come to a media house to speak about their content. Now that is a problem. That should be an opportunity, which has become a problem for some people. So how do we see resources? How do we take advantage of resources? How do we approach these new dimensions that we are trying to propose? In the first week under exploring resources, we are going to be looking at strategic partnerships. Everybody needs somebody. Whether you are an academic in science-based areas, STEM, or non-STEM. You can explore partnerships within your disciplinary field. You can explore partnerships across your disciplinary field. You can explore partnerships across regions. Good enough, I explained one of the reasons we have the regions as main is university and proximity, uh, proximity university. So that opportunity has been presented by design in the program so that you can collaborate with people across regions. You can call it collaborate geographically. You can collaborate with people outside of Nigeria because the part of, uh, some of the coaches and mentors we have on this program are actually from other parts of Africa. So when we are, are open to see what is around us, we can take advantage of this sense. So how do we explore strategic partnerships? One of the key platforms that we are utilizing, like I mentioned earlier, is the LinkedIn platform. It is no longer, um, sufficient for an academic in today's world to be so good. You have a 10 page CV, you have a 15 page or a 20 page CV, you have done so well, you have publications here and there, but the only people that know you are great are the same people in your department, are the people in your faculty, perhaps, or maybe are the most people in your university. How do you take advantage of partnerships with 
the corporate world with industry experts if they do not know you they are not going to come to your university to look for you no. you have to be the one to put yourself out there to look for them so no. that is going to be no. happening in week four no sorry to, sorry to cut you yeah this there's somebody's hands is up so, Dr. Okay. Paul, so I, I apologize if you can't hear us it's maybe your system and every other person hear us please Can every other person hear? You us? can just indicate yes so that we know. We know. Because, and by the way, we are recording this, like I said. So we'll put up the link in case people want to watch it again on the uh, coordinators group. So, so okay, Dr. Pfizer can hear us. Anybody else can hear, okay. can hear us clearly? Okay, you can hear. Okay, so Dr. Dr. Ordu, um, maybe it's your platform or your network. Can you check again, please? Promise. Okay, continue, Doc. Okay, so we are going to be exploring how to connect with people, human as a resource, beyond our communities, beyond our schools, beyond our universities, beyond our departments. And one of the major platforms you're using is the LinkedIn platform. You're able to put yourself out there. We have academics who perhaps they've had their LinkedIn accounts for five years, 10 years. And the only thing there is name and maybe one line, um, lecturer, so, 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 university, full stop that will not suffice. So we are gonna be exploring how to connect with our fellow academics within our disciplines, across disciplines, across ge um, geographical um, regions, on the global space, which the LinkedIn platform provides. All that will happen in week four. In week five, we are going to another dimension of human resource. This time around, students as resource. Hitherto, for most academics, the typical Nigerian academic, the student is seen as a necessary evil. We have to do what we have to do. Um, they are problematic people. Just come, take your course, and get out of my sight. You know, that kind of a thing. But when we begin to think differently, we have 100 people brought to us. People are looking for resources. People are looking for people. But here, people have been brought to us. Whether you have 50 people in your, in your class for your course, or you have 100 people, whatever the number. When we begin to see students as resources, it changes the dynamics. There are many things we can achieve collaborating with students. The typical Nigerian academic may not be as, may not be even be 10% as tech savvy as some of the students. We feel that they are constantly on social media wasting their time. But somebody who is social media savvy is a resource if you know what to do with that person. The other way of looking at students for, um, in terms of entrepreneurial thinking and action is the impact we are making on their own lives. So it's not enough to say, as an academic, I've gone through this program, oh, I'm entrepreneur in my thinking, I'm now doing research, perhaps if you, you're more research inclined, or um, I'm now doing, uh, I can convert my research to patents, I'm now communicating my research better, you know, people all over the world are getting to know about me. That is good. But how about the second aspect of the work of the academic, the teaching aspect? What is the quality of your teaching? We can no longer sit back and say it's okay to just come to class and talk theory and concepts and all of that, and then we go in. Again. How about we become more entrepreneurial in our teaching? How about we recognize we can transfer or communicate our entrepreneurial mindset to students so that the students themselves, they are graduating with that same spirit. They latch on to what we are doing. They catch the same fire. And that can only happen when we begin to deliberately infuse that um, such activities in our classrooms. We become more innovative in our approaches. We become more innovative in our techniques. We become more, um, we, we ensure that what we are doing in the classrooms have real practical applicability in the real world, in the real sense, so that we are not just talking theory, but we are graduating people who really are ready for life. A, an average student will be ready to collaborate with any academic who recognizes the value that they are bringing to the table. And that is what is important. So if you're gonna be able to transform the educational space, it's not enough for the academic to say I'm an entrepreneur just for myself. It's also important that we transmit that to the students that we are engaging. 
So all that will be happening in week five. In week six, we are going to the last phase of exploring resources and approaches. This time around, we are looking at the money. Many of the things that we will need to do might involve money one way or the other. That is a given. The question is, again, you know yourself, you know what you can do, you know what your strengths are. But then you also know how to connect with the people and the, or the persons that have what you require to get your work done or to move you to where you want to be. Money is one of those things that can make that happen. Some people are winning grants. Some people are going on paid conferences. Some people are getting funding to do different things. They don't have 10 heads. If there is a system about it, if there's a wisdom to this thing, then this is where we get to learn it in week six. In week seven, because the whole of the first six weeks have been activity-based, we are doing so many things every week. And every week is not just the engagements that we're having with you, it's also the assignments that will be submitted. The way it is structured, there are going to be three online workshops in the course of that six weeks. And then the others will be um, watching, which watching videos um, from other sec or from other programs. All of that is part of the program. After every session, whether it's an online session or it's a it's watch some video session and discuss the activities there, we are going to be submitting assignments. We are going to be doing activities. So throughout, it's going to be activity days. For some people in week seven, they may, for whatever reasons, may not have finished. Um, whatever activity they need to do. So that week allows us to do, to complete other tasks. If for instance, in trying to be more entrepreneurial with your students, you decide to invite an industry expert to come in and uh, take them through the process, or you want to take your students on a tour, visit streets to see how things are done in the real life. If you have not finished in the, um, by the sixth week, you still have the seventh week to catch up. If you are trying to create an innovation, um, a product, you're collaborating with academics or collaborating with your students, whatever it may be, if you have not finished developing your product or it's not yet ready for launch or it's not yet ready to be released or you have something to communicate, um, translating your research in such a way that the wider community can understand the research, not the one that you put in journals that only us can read and understand that is full of jargons and all those complicated things. You communicate in such a way that Somebody is looking for the kind of solution that we have found can locate us. All of that will be happening in the seventh week. But it's very important to note this. If we are collaborating, of course, we're used to collaborating with academics and then everybody's acknowledged. If we are collaborating with students for whatever reason, even if the person you're collaborating with is a year one student, maybe this person is very tech savvy. You call the person, come, you will be my social media handler from now on. Whatever I need to do to project myself on LinkedIn, you'll be handling everything. Whatever I need to do to showcase, I want to do videos to, to show the impact of my latest project, you handle it. Whatever you are doing with students, please, the students need to be acknowledged. That's very important. In the eighth week, we then do the review um, of everything we have done, during the recap and see how we move forward from here. At every phase of the work, for every week, the activities have to be submitted as we proceed so that we don't have a situation where people are trying to submit um, assignments of last week, this week, especially if it is time tied to a particular week um, program, so that that progression is easy. If we see the way it's broken down, we have so for some topics we have two weeks to explore. So it's very important that we take the assignment seriously. We are trying to make impact that is measurable, that is um, it, it, it can prove that indeed these things are possible. If people are doing it, we can do it as well. This is a set program for staff. For the students, their program is slightly different. Before you continue, it's also quite, quite... Before you continue, Doc, I think it's maybe a good time okay. to, to reflection. To get okay, so feel. Any questions from anybody so far, please? Any questions or comments from the breakdown? I know it might still feel a bit hazy, for a few of you, just from week one to week, week that's to week eight, but it's okay because we will actually share the curriculum to the coordinators. Only the coordinators will have access to the full curriculum because so you can know what you're anticipating next week. It helps you when you are maybe speaking with staff members from your university on the pilot project and how to help them 
when it comes to assignments. Now, let me explain what I mean by assignment because I, I, I would imagine I don't want it to look as if you are having to do examinations on this program. Um, many people are used to, is, 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 is an important point. Many people are used to programs where you just go three days, lots of workshop, 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 content, 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 and then nothing using the content after the program has finished. But the trouble is that there's clear evidence that once you leave that program, in most cases, because you are so busy, you never get around to actually using the content and knowledge of the program. I'll give you a simple example. I know many universities, that's, and this is true, who have had different uh, training programs on funding. They trained their staff on funding. In fact, I went to one recently, and, and they said, oh, by the way, we just did an amazing program on funding applications three months ago. And I'm in the room and I said, okay, well, in three months, in this room, who has applied for funding? Out of a room of over 300 staff members, only two people's hands went up. So what was the purpose of all the training? But a program that is designed such that you are doing something, no matter how small, as the program is going on, you have been exposed to the practicality, the learning. So it's learning by doing. It's a different premise, especially for busy academics. That's why it's structured this way. So exercises will be fun. I can assure you it will be fun. So for example, in week, I think it's in week five or week six, or week five, we're doing partnerships. So an exercise would be, for example, I would say, how many pages is your CV? Average academic has 10 pages. And then the exercise would be, in the next couple of days, update your LinkedIn profile with your CV. That would take you literally 10 minutes. Copy, paste, copy, paste. But you've done it. There are many people who have been wanting to update their LinkedIn profile for a long time, but they never get around to it. But in this program, we will specifically ask you, in two days' time, update your LinkedIn profile with your CV. Even if you have to ask a student to help you do it, that's fine. I'll give another example. Many academics focus on just publications for research as a way of promotion. But like uh, Dr. Obala was saying, the only people who read papers of research are only academics like you. So an exercise would be, look at your last published paper and now write a 100 word blog or article that you have to publish on LinkedIn for a non-scientific audience. That is an exercise. And, and that, that, the idea is the coaches would make sure and you coordinators will make sure staff are doing it. It's going to be fun to, to learn to do this because we live in a new world. So I saw uh, Dr. Kuchuku's hand go up. Could you comment, sir? I think you want to say something. Yeah, thank you so much. I mean, it's already sounding very interesting. And um, Dr. Aguibwe, thank you for the very good job that you are doing, taking it step by step. I just want to know at what point you're talking about the staff. I believe that the, the staff uh, we are talking about are the ones that have been selected. That's um, after uh, uh, not not the not the entire batch that we we just sent. That's correct. So is the Am I correct? You know, the ones you've selected are the ones going on the program. Those eighty. And and in terms of the numbers, where yeah. does the coordinator like myself come in? Am I part of that staff or you are outside part of, of the, the number? You are, you are, if I, you have two, two roles, you are coordinator and beneficiary. How can you not, how can you be coordinator and not benefit from the program? <laughs> okay. I just wanted to that clarify. Fact, Thank you fact, so much. In fact, the coordinators are the number one staff on the program. Yeah, the they are number one on the list. <laughs> You're the first participant as far as we are concerned. Okay. But it's a good question. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay, go on, go on, dog. Okay, let me quickly go through the ICCP. The ICC program, just like the SET program, is for eight weeks. It will be happening at the same time the SET program is happening. So for the ICCP program, in the first week, we are doing career exploration. This will also take us into week two. What we are doing here is we want, to, we want students to be able to think about their career um, um, interests, what catches your fancy. Some people are in university doing courses that they didn't exactly plan to do, but that is not a problem if you know what to do with that kind of a situation again. There are some people that feel that, 
oh, that's not, um, that career may not be very lucrative. Okay, so what do you consider to be a lucrative career? So we have students able to dig deep within themselves based on the environment they have found, they have found themselves and explore what are the possible areas I can go. Okay, so I'm studying this particular course. What and what are the possibilities with this course? Or if I don't even want to pursue this course beyond this, or I don't want to pursue this career beyond this level, what might I be interested in? So allows all of them to think deeply about um, their choices and their preferences. Once that is done, they can begin to gain clarity, which is one of the major problems that we have. People don't even know what they want to do or where they want to go and what, what is possible and what is available. So in the third week, we're then going, more, we're going deeper into, now that you've identified possible areas that you might be interested in, what are the routes you can take to explore those areas? Um, we have identified three career routes that anybody could explore. Even if you want to go into science-based areas, you want to go into industry or whatever, whatever the industry may be. Instead that you're going as an entrepreneur, as an employee, or you want to further studies in that area. So students are able to, again, think critically, what do I want to go in forward? It's not when they've graduated and maybe they get out there, they start looking for a job. Um, one year down the line, there's no work. They are thinking, okay, you know what? Uh, let me go and do master's. You're already late on that track. Or um, they come out to say, okay, you know what? I want to set up a business. They set up a business six months down the line. One error has not come in. They start thinking, okay, you know what? Let me go and look for a job. You are late. You need to begin to think about those things before you leave school. So that particular week, in week three, we're going to be exploring all of that so that students begin to think critically about what the options are, what the possibilities are, and begin to map out and plan. Again, but once they have been able to do that, then they can now create a CV using their own experiences. One of the most important things with regard to beefing up a CV is um, the experience section. For the most part, a typical student will tell you, oh, okay, yes, I'm, I'm a student, so I can write my current education, but I don't have experience. What should I write there? And so what am I going to say? You know, We are going to take students to have them to understand that there are opportunities all over within and outside the university system to gain experience. No employer is waiting to employ you to give you first experience. No, they expect you to come with experience. So the program is designed in such a way that students begin to understand things differently. And one of the ways that we are pushing that agenda is to help them to go into volunteerism. What volunteerism does is they disabuse your mind from the thinking that your first job must be a paid job, not necessarily. What is important is to get experience, get the skills, get the exposure and have it in your CV. Let it show that you have been doing something, not coming with an empty slate or a blank sheet of paper as a CV. So we'll do all of that in week four. In week five, we're gonna be exploring career perspectives. Just like we did for the SET program. In the ICCP also, we're helping students to see what are the challenges in your environment? What are the problems that you see? What gets to you? What might you be interested in solving? Why are you here? Can you think about these things? What that does is it begins, uh, it begins to open the eyes of students to see a problem as an opportunity. All around us, there are things that need to be done, problems that need to be solved. For the most part, you find that no, nobody's really, nobody is trying to is, um, throwing work out there. There may not be jobs as some people may see it, but there is always work. When we see the opportunities for work, then we know how to take advantage of those opportunities. In the second phase of that particular uh, module, the career perspectives, we are also looking at the current and the future professional self of students. Right from school, students need to begin to position themselves in their thinking and in their actions as professionals. Until they begin to see things in that, in that direction, not just as students in school doing a particular course and just getting by, but as people prepping for a different world, a world where the preparation, where the, where the initiations begin right from school. So being able to articulate how they see themselves currently based on the career directions they have seen themselves going into, 
based on the problems they've seen themselves solving, their current position, and then how they, what they see for the future. For both SET and ICCP, that future, it being able to see the future is important. What might I look like five years down the line? If I explore this career path, if I take X, Y, Z steps, where do I see myself in the next five years? So all that will be, tre be treated in week six. In week seven, we are looking at the person. In looking at the individual person, we are trying to understand, we are getting the um, students to understand themselves as individuals. In particular, beyond your environment, beyond understanding what's going on in the various industries that you might have selected as your industry of choice, who are you? What are your specific areas of interest? What would you do even if you were not paid? All of these understandings are critical. Again, just like in the SET program, it's all, there are going to be activities, submissions for at each level. For each week of activity, for each week um, topic, there's activity following. And these activities will be assessed, assessed to determine who is improving at what rate, at what pace. In week eight, which is the final week, we are also teaching the students how to network and explore resources. Because it's not enough to say, yes, I want to go into um, the medical field or I want to be a teacher. I love this particular career direction. I've mapped out my plans. How do you connect with the people that can help you move from point A to point B? Every, every opportunity will come through somebody. So until they're able to see that every person is an opportunity, every person is a resource that is connecting them from where they are to where they ought to be, it, 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 it becomes a, a, a daunting tax for them. But when they are able to connect mentally that this person, whether this lecturer, or I met this person in a particular, um, at a particular event, or I just stumbled into somebody, everybody has somebody, something that somebody needs. So we are taking them through in week eight, the partnership week, how to connect how to network with people, and how to explore career resources. Again, just like in the SET program, they're also going to be utilizing LinkedIn. Why is that important? It cannot be overstated. So this word, we cannot say we have built a CV, we have a great CV, we can do X, Y, Z, we are skill based, and then we are fantastic, and then nobody knows about it. The people that will engage them, the people that will give them these opportunities, whether they're volunteering opportunities or internship opportunities or paid opportunities, they are there on the platform waiting to see what they have to offer. So we'll take them through how to utilize the LinkedIn platform for networking and the resources within their environments. Every week, they will submit their assignments. Most of the, assi the assignments usually will be in one or two categories. They're either coming as comments direct answers to questions. For instance, we ask you, so what career areas would you be interested in going? Or they come in form of creations, create a CV, create a LinkedIn post, or an activity, go out there, um, find an organization that you would want to volunteer in, whether the organization, the organization may be within the school environment. There are myriads of um, organizations, SMEs, within the, school, within the school space, within the university. Just walk into anyone, tell them you're ready to volunteer, just to get an experience, just to be able to brief up your CV, just to be able to develop the skills that are required. Because that big dream you're looking at, that big job that you're hoping to get when you come out of school, they don't want you to come blank. They want you to come with something. So we're going to be doing all of that in, in the course of the program. All assignments will be assessed. We have a team of coaches and mentors for the two programs. The coaches will be in charge of the um, staff program, the mentors will be in charge of the student program. They are all reputable people and they're going to be um, a support system for personnel uh, working with um, participants to ensure that the engagement is going on, the assignments are being submitted, the students are learning and they are carrying out every activity and then we can measure along the way. Every assignment will be measured, every submission will be measured and that is going to form part of our data. The data is going to be very robust. And we are hoping that we have everybody um, on the same page so that that's actually why we are doing this, so that everybody understands what the program is and what their rules are, what's to expect, especially for coordinators.
because you are going to be critical um, for the major rollouts after this particular phase. I don't know if that's... Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, go. Okay, so that is basically is a rundown of the ICCP program, which so will be have, happening. So we have some questions. So Dr. Promise. Okay. So uh, Dr. Promise, can you go first? Because I think I saw your hand first. Yes. Can you hear me? It's very yes. good. Can, can, can anybody hear me? Yes, yes we, can. we can hear you. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Vela, for the presentation. There are a few things I would like you to please uh, run through. First, the lectures, I understand, is recorded. Is it possible to get it to play back after the, after the presentation so That's that uh, we can pick up anything that will be missed out? That's then uh, yes. se second thing is that I'd like you to go over the stage one, two, and three of the staff program itself. I think I joined at about where you were talking of the four, five, six, up to the seven and eight, eight weeks spillovers. So if you please, if it's possible, just quickly run through the week one and two activities. That's for the staff. Then the, the students own, per se, which you're running through. How do we now, as part of the coordinators for staff, able to also coordinate the students. Is there an assignment that we need to watch or follow them up to ensure that that is done or how to carry them along? Please, thank you. So, so Doc, so before okay. I call Dr. Aisha, um, let me quickly respond very quickly. So for the first point you made, um, yes and for, yes, absolutely, after the call, within one hour, you will see the link to this video. Can you please mute your microphones? Hello? Okay, good. So after this call, the link to this video will be placed on the WhatsApp group for the coordinators. So you can watch this again. That's the first point. Second point is um, for, I, I think it's better, sir, instead of going back again and going through step one, two, three, because time is going, we already passed six. Instead, you can watch the video, but more than that, we will be giving, submitting the actual curriculum for the student program and the staff program. So you can actually see week one is quite detailed. What is happening in week one? What are the assignments we are asking them to do? So you will see the curriculum. We will post it only to the coordinators. We won't give this to the staff because it's good for the staff to just flow as we progress on the program. But for the coordinators, it's good for you to know where we are at and what is co coming next week. So you can prepare as to what happens the, the, that's the following week. So that curriculum that she just described would be shared to all coordinators. That's point two. Point three, and it's a very important point. What you don't know is while you are coordinators, okay, from different universities, we actually have a another WhatsApp group called Coaches and Mentors. It's about 40 people in that group. So we have compiled a very comprehensive list of international professionals who are coaches and mentors who have been doing this for a long time. And the good thing is they are spread over 15 African countries. And it's important because we even want our staff and students to begin to get a flavor as to internationalization, even through their mentors as much as possible. So it is nice for a student, a Nigerian student, to have a South African mentor, a Zambian mentor, a Ugandan mentor. We have all these mentors already on the WhatsApp group as we speak. The trouble is you guys have not met, but at some point there will be a, co a cohesive meeting of coordinators, which are you guys and the mentors and coaches. So those will be helping. But for, for the coordinators, because you are also a, an admin on all the student groups, so it's also good for you to be pre-preview as to the exercises and the, the, the workings of the student program. So you also be aware because if you're going to be the lead coordinator in your region, you need to know both the staff program and the student program. That's very, very important. Does that answer your question, sir? Before I go to yes, the that, that, that answers the question, you know, well. One more question. Now, okay. with the coordinators, you're ready now. 
you know, brainstorming with us, giving us a real down of what to do. Now, yes. the other staff of whose names are already on your list, per se, who will be yes. part of this program. Now, how do we get them involved? Do we go back, pass this information, which you're giving now, in yes. order to prepare them ahead of the kickoff date, which already will fix for the face of February? Already, so, mm -hmm. you're already thinking ahead, and I like it very okay. much. So, okay. there's okay. actually a schedule, which I was going to come to that at the end of this briefing. They are okay. having a staff briefing on Thursday. Okay. So all the staff of that are okay. on the list of all okay. the universities will be having okay. so the WhatsApp the, the, the Zoom link will be shared to you guys after this briefing. I was okay. going to say that after the briefing, but you've already preempted me. So oh, there you go. Okay. So there will be an actual briefing of all staff at 5 p.m. on Thursday. Every okay. staff will be briefed and we will schedule a separate day for the students. That's perfect. That's perfect. Yes. Thank you, Doctor and and good evening to you all. Um, lots of information I can say. Um, um, I, my concern is uh, is two or are two. Um, one is uh, we are already in in session with students. Okay. I think she she broke up. We can't hear her again. I don't know. I know. Maybe are you people network. still hearing her? I can't hear her from this end. I think it's her network. Okay, what I'll do is, okay, how about uh, uh, Professor Uchenna uh, Odani? Could you please? Yes. Can yes. Can we wait for? I... Can you hear? Can you hear? Hear okay, me, she's please. Back, she's back, she's back. Okay, Professor Aisha, go on, please. Can you hear? Can you hear me? I think the network is uh, uh, breaking. So my me. concern. Let me just run quickly. Yes, let me run quickly. That uh, at what time is this um um uh, course going to be deployed to the students? Because they have different programs. They have different lecture hours. And um, um I, I I I just want to ask because I I have been receiving some of these questions already. Okay. And then First, secondly, um, the, the, the assignments too, we need to consider that they are already in the mid of the semester yes. and there are also a lot of expectations from their already ongoing programs and, and their different uh, respective faculties and departments. Of so course. we need to also take that into consideration with, with concerning the, the, the assignments. Um, and then um, another consideration too is that in the next week, Monday, for the for the Muslim students, we are going to start the Ramadan. So um, timing or ways to deploy these has to be really um, considered so that it doesn't conflict with um, some of the both academic activities and maybe spiritual activities of of. So let, let me respond to you, Prof. Before I call on them. So I understand what you mean. So let, let me try and speak to that quickly. So number one, number one, is a very flexible. Okay, sorry. There's a bit of a noise in the background. So, first point. Okay, can everybody hear? Me? Okay, good. So to respond to Professor Aisha, I think it's an, a very two very important questions, I think for the benefit of everybody else. Number one, it's a very flexible program for the students. As a matter of fact, just in case you're wondering, this program is actually, as we speak right now, it's actually a mandatory three credit course of Igbinezion University. So this has already been running with incredible impact. But then even at that point of rollout at the University of Ibinedion, as we speak, we haven't been focused on measuring impact. 
which is why this is a brand new pilot. First point. Number two, it's very flexible such that it's totally virtual. There's no basis for going to a classroom. And it's also flexible in that it is self-paced. So all the videos are pre-recorded. And so the student just needs to know, okay, within the next one week, watch these two short videos. Each video, maybe 15 minutes. And you and I know that students are already busy. That's fine. But then they also have enough time to spend hours on Instagram. So basically what we are doing is reallocating some Instagramming <laughs> and Facebooking <laughs> to an actual program beneficial to them because students already do that. So they will just watch a few videos and do exercises. Now, what are the exercises? They are very simple, practical exercises. What do I mean? I'll give you a simple example. I can say, oh, by the way, um, how many of you have a CV? So in the next one week, submit your current CV. That's a very simple exercise, which they can do very quickly. It doesn't matter if the CV is fantastic or not. I'll give an example of another exercise. Oh, by the way, if you were to get a job, okay, what kind of career direction do you see yourself going into? They only have to respond, okay, maybe I want to work in this place, work in this place. The idea is, these are the kinds of questions students never get to think about until after graduation. So we are make, we are forcing them to think about it and respond. And a mentor is assessing it. So there is no exercise like go and write a five-page report. None of those. That's not this, that, 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 because we know they are students. They have got their own, their own courses. That's the way it's structured. So we've done this many, many times. And no matter how busy the students are, it's structured such that they still deliver it because of the nature of the flexibility. I don't know what that responds to you, Professor Aisha. Professor Danny, you can go. Yes, go. it's perfect, doctor. Thank, it's perfect, doctor. Thank you. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful response. Beautiful Professor response. Danny. Professor Danny, yes. please. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I have enjoyed the, the lectures, but uh, I have just one concern is to know from your experience, how do you deal with attrition? How, okay. how so that we can have um, some insight so that when we encounter those things, we know how to deal with it during the course of the program. Okay, so it's a good point to raise. And I think uh, um, in some sense, the way, the way you want to look at it is this. In, in many cases, based on my experience anyway, the design of the program tries to mitigate that, okay? Because you almost cannot guarantee in every sense that anybody who begins the program will finish it. Are you, are you following me, Prof? So, Part of what we've done is this, because we are trying to show evidence of impact. And if you have a, a, a classroom of 200 students and only 50 of them are submitting the exercises, and then the remaining ones say the reason is because they are too busy or they don't have internet data, that is a problem for the project, which is the reason why, the reason why you are currently having a WhatsApp group is there will be a pre-selection that would happen by next week to now gauge the numbers that goes into phase one. You know, remember I told everybody that there is phase one, phase two. So not everybody that you've submitted will go into phase one. Phase one would be to make sure that the experiment makes sense. So questions like how often do you spend online or how long do you spend online? Do you have a smart mobile phone? All those simple, simple questions are the basis with which we will not be able to articulate folks who will go into the initial pilot because we want a clear case evidence of, and this is important, evidence of the impact. But then it also brings up a new point. If at the end of the survey, 600 students, it now shows that 300 students don't have smartphones or internet, then we have a problem. It means that we can also write in the report that guess what? For the national rollout, the fund that needs to consider in one form or the other, making provisions to make it easier for students who don't have data or smartphones. So it becomes both ways. That can only be done on that pre-selection questionnaire phase, which would happen even before the project actually starts. Does that help, sir, madam? Yes. Beautiful, because we need to be sure and we need to know why there is attrition. If data shows that it's because 
80% of the students you've all nominated, because obviously most of you nominated the students without really speaking to them. And it's just now we are now engaging them. But that's good because it means it's random sampling. In that random sampling, if 70% can actually go into the program because they don't have internet data, then we have a problem. It means that we can write in the final report a national rollout based on data. It has to be based on data. We need to make provisions for internet for this, for this, for this program to make sense. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. I saw Professor, I think Professor Sambo. Professor Elkana, <laughs> I, saw, I saw your hand, sir. You yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation. Some of some of my questions, some of my doubts have been uh, cleared. Okay. Um, for example, some students are asking, uh, okay, is it only assignment? What of exam? Since the certificate will be given at the end of the day, is there going to be exam? I say, well, I don't know. I will have to uh, ask. And then the issue of the internet also was also asked. Uh -huh. So I... I think you have touched part of it. So, uh, there's no examination. Those exercises are the exams because it's learning by doing. Okay, okay. No, okay. Examination. no. So as long as they're doing the exercises, the yes. mentors know their job. Mentors is just to articulate who is submitting the exercises at the right time. And at the okay. end, they will be assessed. And an actual grade will be given. Because okay. that is the basis with which they are issued the certification. Okay. Okay. But between me and you, I mean, I won't tell the students this. As long yes, as they're participating and submitting some of the assignment, there's no pass, there's no fail in this program. Oh. There's no Great. fail. It's not, your, it's not a typical program where people have to fail. As long as they've submitted the exercises, there's no grading of 100%. No, you've done the job, you've gotten the learning. Okay. Thank you very much, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you. Doc, I think we are okay with questions now. You can continue, then we can come back if there are other questions. Over to you. I, I had a question that we will have, we will have cleared uh, uh, with the, about the students team, now that we are talking about students. Okay. Now, uh, is there going to be any briefing? You have mentioned that the staff will be briefed I think uh, on Thursday or thereabouts. Yes. So the student now, what, is there going to be a briefing for students? Yes, the student briefing will be next week. The reason is because okay. while we've now almost articulated all the staff groups, we okay. still have at least three or four student groups to come through. So okay. we don't okay. have two briefings because now right. we can only brief students by putting a Zoom link on their groups. So if there are no groups, that is a bit difficult. Does that make sense? Makes a, it makes a whole lot well, of sense. Thank you. Coordinators who haven't sent us their student groups to do so AS, ASAP is the only reason we can't even hold the student groups this week. But the staff group would happen on Thursday because we are almost there. I think it's only one university left, which is fine. Yeah, only one university left. Okay, Doc, over to you. Okay, so somebody asked in the chat room if coordinators will be in the intervention or control. I think we answered that question before. Coordinators are the first set of participants. They will be in the intervention. They are taking the program. Yes. So that's sorted. Thank you very much. Yeah. That is one hour. Is that, is that, is that, is that, is that, what, what else are we, are we supposed to cover? Um, we, no, we've, 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 we've done the, we've done the structure, we've done the curriculum. Um, okay. The rest of it, the evaluation protocol is not, um, it does not necessarily need so much elaboration. What we are simply doing with the evaluation is um, ensuring that we use utilize platforms that allow us to collect data. So for instance, I mentioned earlier that we're going to have two kinds of assignments to be submitted, the comments based type assignment and the creations. The comments type assignments are, um, for instance, you ask um, a student, what um, are your preferred career directions? It's a simple response kind of thing. 
that kind of a thing, you simply provide the answer in a Google form. Um, the Google we can easily collate from there and then we do the analysis. For the creation kind of assignment, um, we ask the student, for instance, to prepare a CV. You, prepare, you can't prepare a CV on the Google form. So you prepare the CV and submit to your, um, submit to your respective mentor, and then you create a LinkedIn post. The ability to communicate effectively on platforms that, um, that are as professional as LinkedIn is a very vital skill that students need to learn. And they need that skill before they finish school because we, we are trying to ensure that they are ready once they come out. So those kind of creations, the CV kind of creations or creating LinkedIn posts and things like that are gonna be happening um, on, a, on different platforms. At the end of the day, um, the assignment culminates in the LinkedIn groups. So when a student, for instance, has put up a LinkedIn post to express themselves regarding whatever their career directions may be or what they might want to volunteer what areas they might want to volunteer or what particular skills they may want to you know, learn or whatever interest areas they want to go into or articulating their current or professional selves. You do a post about that. Everybody on LinkedIn can see that your quote unquote uh, potential employer can see what you, you're doing. But for the ease of administration, the student then takes that link and puts it in our LinkedIn group. Um, I mentioned that um, coordinators will be onboarded. Onboarding has started actually on the LinkedIn group. So, but when we get to that phase, we know how to cross it. It's better to take the information in phases so that we don't bombard people with too much information that you may not need right now. Thank you very much. So, guys, um, I, I thank you so much for sparing the time to do this. This is very, this is truly, in my part anyway, I know like I'm the project lead and everything, but truly, this hasn't happened before in Nigeria, mm -hmm. as far as I know. I know many progress that has happened and after the end of the program, well, there's no real evidence of impact. This is different. And I think for me, I'm, I'm excited for what the future holds. That issue of unemployability or staff, or academic staff looking for money, all those different things has to stop. And it's just transitioning you or staff members or students from theoretical concepts to practical. <clears throat> now, I want to make a very clear point. It's very important. Please and please, I'm begging everybody. I will write this in the group as well. Don't share the curriculum to any staff member or student. It's absolutely important. Or else you will disrupt the design of the book. It needs to be an anticipation for what happens next. That's what makes the program thrive. But for coordinators, it's important to know what the curriculum is, but I'm begging you, please don't share with any staff member. It's just for your eyes only to help you for coordination because you need to know what is expected in case people ask you questions. Because guess what? When it comes to asking of questions, it's not us that will be disturbing, and that's true, it is you guys. So, the more you know, the better for everybody. So, we have to make available every information at our disposal to make you perform your role better, make it possible. Any final okay. or last question so we can wrap it up? It's almost uh, 5.30 or 7.30. Mm. Okay. Just, mm -hmm. just, uh, just a reflective question. Good evening, everybody. It has been fantastic. Just a reflective question concerning some peculiarities about um, attendees. Um, for those who, for whatever reason, were not uh, included in the master, it's based on um, our core elimination process. Is there any chance of those people, um, is, are there a chance to address some those people who have a chance, uh, an opportunity Doc. to? Doc, I apologize. Doc, Doc. There's so much noise, we can't hear you. Let's try again. Just give me a okay, Doc, you can go again now. There's, there was so much noise, we couldn't hear you at all. And now you won't hear me because I'm totally unmuted. Okay, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. We can oh, hear you. Oh, it feels so good to be clearer. Okay, good evening, everybody. My colleagues, our facilitators, the director, and everybody else, I think we've been having a great time. We'll continue to learn and become experts in getting this thing done because this is unique to Nigeria. That's for my introduction. So by way of a reflection, a reflective question, 
you know, in terms of the attendance, for example, you, um, you I mean, a lot of things happen in the course of it and all that. But my point is, for people who are not now finally in our uh, final 600, for example, as we have now, we have our final 600, and who may have been uh, removed, even though you attended, but maybe we discovered you are not male, you are not female. My point exactly is that what kind of um, future do we have for them in terms of planning? Good question. Thank you very much. So, that's a very important point. You know, I keep talking about region and all the coordinators in this room become the lead coordinators for the regional rollout or national rollout. Now, you should, you should obviously know that the university in this group becomes the first university for the program rollout in the region. So, any student who are interested, and trust me, students talk to each other. So, there will be jealousy. Oh, why am I not on this program? When you see other students doing amazingly, that would happen. The response is very simple. Just chill. This would happen for everybody. <clears throat> it's another reason why it was important for us to focus on final year students because they're about to leave. I understand that for some universities, there's maybe enough, maybe not, not enough final year students or there is a lot more engagement. So we allow them to at least put in some third year students just to make up numbers. That's still fine doesn't disturb the data so much. But ultimately, that is the reason why we chose final year students only for the program. But ultimately, when it comes to national rollout, your university becomes the first university. In fact, I would say in phase one, is actually coordinating this for the rollout of the program at your university. Now, we haven't decided what form that would take. So we might say, okay, guess what? Across the country, we only focus on only final year students first and then third year students and so on, because it's, it's, it's a way of buying time. These ones are about to leave. We could say, okay, well, for the phase one, year four, if I'm a year, and penultimate year first. All that we haven't decided. We are focusing on the pilot, but you're very, very correct. This program will be made available to everybody. In fact, guess what? I won't mention names, but I, can, I know specific universities as we speak. I'm not even waiting for the, for the national rollout. I'm already speaking to me. Oh, where did you buy the food? Available. Okay, they have food. As we speak. Okay. I won't mention names, but I'm telling you that there are some investors already telling me, Doc, what does it involve financially to make this program available to all our students, even before the national rollout kicks off? That is because they've started seeing the importance and the impact for transformation. Does that answer your question, Doc? Dr. Mina. Oh, I think she dropped off the call. Any other questions or comments before we call it today? Okay. If uh, just to say that you are doing a very good job. Uh, I think um, I, I, I appreciate the lots of work that have gone into this and what could be achieved with it. Uh, you know, uh, making the uh, staff to begin to think in entrepreneurial, that's a very big, very, very big achievement. There are many universities during that time of um, strike, there are many lecturers that became, became very helpless, very, very helpless when they could use what they have to get what they want. So thank you so much for this program. Most appreciated. God bless you. Most appreciated. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. And so, yeah, if there are any comments, any questions, please, we are available. Just put the question on the group. If you think it's a personal question, you want to maybe proceed, that's fine. Send a DM to myself, to Anthony, or to Dr. Viola, which I've introduced to everybody. Please, by way of just appreciation, I'd like us to appreciate Dr. Viola. She's done, I mean, guys, you have not even seen the evaluation protocol yet. What she's done is pretty impressive. And so the idea is, is, to, be, is, to, is to, to, to get the best out of this program. So we do appreciate all our work. All of you, the work you've done so far. I was chatting with uh, Professor Aisha this afternoon. Was it yesterday? And she was saying, oh my goodness, the amount of hassle and stress just to form the WhatsApp group. And I truly understand that. It is a lot of work. 
but eventually I know it's for a better a good outcome. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, have a lovely evening. And so I will post a few things on the group. The link to the video. Of the I will post the information for all day staff meeting because I want you guys to be the ones to invite the staff in your group. If you Absolutely. Know, so the, yes, Zoom link, the Zoom link for Thursday 5 p.m. staff meeting for every staff on the program is meeting with us on Zoom for a briefing on Thursday 5 p.m. 5 p.m. UK time, which is 6 p.m. Nigerian time. So that mm. is we put in the group. Have a lovely evening. God bless. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Doc. God bless. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Okay. Yeah, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. So, so we can leave you. the meeting. Thank you very much. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, sir. Uh.